So we're here at the Lunara Connect uh, Hong Kong 2018, and uh, who are you? I'm Laura Decker. And you just did a presentation about your, uh, is it art that um, you do? Yeah, yes. It's, yeah, I'm, I actually have a technical background, so it takes me a while to realize that, yes, I actually I now work as an artist. So it's like uh, uh, art that uses AI, or what is, how, do you, how does it work? Yeah, most of what I do is using AI at the moment. Um, I've been producing machines, um, kind of sentient machines. So for example, this was one of the slides that you were showing it. Um, so there's like projector poetry on the floor and what's going on here? Okay, so this machine, which has kind of constructed itself from discarded components and junk, has grown out of the junk and it's beginning to explore the world that it, it's found itself in. And it, so it's looking, using its camera, looking around at, at what it can see, and it's tasting it. So I've used a neural network, I've trained a neural network, so that the machine can, can transform its video stream into some sense of, of taste at what it's seeing. And then you, you're also showing some little robots that you had, um, you have some AI robots that are like having some kind of role? <laughs> yeah, so I was... Um, Noticing that the, uh, the, the media were presenting stories about AI that were quite um, hyping and uh, instilling quite fear <laughs> into people. Uh, so I was collecting headlines. I was quite interested in the, the way the, these headlines grouped themselves um, about the kind of the anxieties that people had about. AI. Do you have any anxiety about AI? Because I think it's like overhyped. Like there's not going to be, a, it's not going to take over the world. Um, I, I wouldn't be surprised if it does become quite powerful independently. You would or you would not? I wouldn't. I, I think it, it, it yeah. might well do. And, and I think, so I think there could be quite um, Disruption quite a bit in of humanity. confrontation and, uh, in, in working out how how to sort of control if, if, the, if the AI becomes quite independent and, and powerful. Yeah, I think that would But you said you, you're not too worried that the AI is going to take over your job, but over here it looks like it's doing all the poetry and the, the, like the graphics and stuff. So Absolutely. you're not worried that yeah. the artist is going to be disrupted? Yeah, I, I, think, I, I think that actually that this 4% likelihood of my job being taken over, no, I think that's it's probably a way underestimate. So 4% per year? So that means within 20 years is for sure, or what? Oh, I see. That's no? a very okay. good point. I don't know. It wasn't <laughs> my. It wasn't okay. my. It was That's this, not how it was. It's just yeah. a BBC uh, website that was doing this. Yeah. So um, you, uh, you know a uh, uh, Kantar from the H supercomputing Lenaro, um, right? Uh, you were a student together. The, um, I wasn't a student. Kantar, yeah, Kantar was doing her. Actually, I knew her as an undergraduate too, and then she was doing her PhD. I was working as a researcher. Um, at University College London. And she's doing some supercomputing stuff. It's she was, we were both working on genetic algorithms at the time. What is genetic algorithm? Um, it's using kind of uh, the evolution as, as a model, as a way of developing better solutions to a problem. So life, you know, the problem of, of living and existing and <laughs> feeding and so on. Um, the, we have our the genetic code the, the idea of genetic algorithms is that you represent the problem that you're trying to solve as, as as like a genetic code and you have a pool of candidate solutions to your problem that you set free to mate and reproduce and they eventually uh, develop better solutions to the problems that, that they've been set was it something that alan turing studied after he did the oh he like thought of the computer and stuff and then he wanted to do stuff that's related to that or evolutionary computation yeah is it something no I maybe i don't remember hearing his name associated with yeah. that actually but so so uh, the probability of like life going one direction or the other is, oh okay is that what it is? no that, again no that's no. Uh, slightly different i guess okay. no it's, but it's, it's using genetics as as the kind of the mechanism of it but also uh, you can think of it as a metaphor whatever problem you're trying to solve, um, be it like uh, chip design or, <laughs> or, or living and finding a mate. And, <laughs> and then here you have a, um, 
a graph showing the whole process of what you do? Yeah, yeah. So the idea is, I, uh, it, it's quite heavily influenced by the work um, Daniel Dennett has done on on, hum on the human mind and consciousness. The idea that the brain doesn't have one centralized control. There's actually lots of processes all competing with each other, um, sensing things, producing output, and um, and then kind of almost competing with each other and what, what, what you choose to do, what, what happens is, is a kind of net result of, of all of those processes fighting. And uh, what have you heard about Delinaro and uh, all these engineers that are doing the open source uh, crazy stuff, making the whole world uh, work on free well, software? It's wonderful for me. That's what I use. That's my, <laughs> that's my whenever new stuff comes out, uh, it's really exciting for me because it's new, new tools that I can use in, in different ways. Uh, so I'm massively grateful for, for people who How do that. How about the big announcement from Delinaro, the 96 boards, they're launching the AI boards. They mm -hmm. have a whole bunch of new development boards they have these neural processors that can do faster AI and so you might enjoy playing with those totally yeah yeah mm -hmm. and and putting some uh, some algorithms on there yeah I guess. absolutely yeah at the moment I do all that stuff in software but hardware would make it it would make it possible to do it faster and yeah do more you might more bigger get faster. surprised but what comes out of your next art piece right yeah totally yeah right and where is it gonna be where? Yeah, you're based in the UK. I'm based. Yeah, I'm based in London. Um, I'm actually I'm working on something for a, a discovery museum at the moment, which is uh, I'm making. It's for a kids' discovery museum in in the UK. Yeah, in London. Yeah, uh, no, it's in okay. it's in Halifax, um, just north, and it, I'm, I'm making an interactive sofa. So when the kids stroke the sofa, uh, things happen. I want that at home. Yeah. I think my sofa needs to be smart. I'm waiting for the smart chairs, smart floor, smart everything. Yeah, yeah. That well, I've done this before. I did a version of this in a, for a different exhibition that I didn't have time to talk about, but um, as this uh, psychotropic lounge. So I made this sofa that you stroke and it changes the wallpaper while you're doing that. And kind of Sony has been in difficulties, kind of like uh, with their money and stuff like that. But recently they, they showed a little dog like an Ibo dog, mm -hmm. and uh, it supposedly has an AI, and it's like, uh, I'm not sure what it does, you know? Yeah. But I think that could, be, that could be a future for a lot of big tech companies to do things that doesn't, they don't have to be like completely functional or something, yeah. but it gives you another uh, <laughs> a nicer feeling to be interacting with some kind of AI. Yeah, there they're actually been uh, those out for quite a few years. In fact, I got some for my niece and nephew, and they have what they call naughty mode, which is presumably the machine just broken down and not not uh, not not functioning, but it's turned into a virtue by calling it naughty mode. So you could be uh, maybe consulting with uh, giant companies to make them launch some super nice uh, AI sofas maybe in mass production? Yeah, absolutely. You, you would be yeah. interested? Yeah, yeah. Some uh, top-end furniture companies, that would be great. Yeah. Yep. All right. IKEA, I hope they're watching. <laughs> okay. Cool.